I've been warded and he organised a fly pass for me. How about that, Ollie? You get that in Lincolnshire. <laughs> Amazing. Right, I'm just looking at Andrew's tractor here. It's a, it's a, what you use for hedge cutting. It's an MX-135. If you remember the other week, we showed you David Jones's MX-135. Well, guess which one's older? It's, a, it's ready for a bit of a tea cut and a polish. As you can see. Fast track looks mint though. For what 12 years old is it 61 on, what are we on 23 now what's it done 3,000 hours just running Cummins engine as well isn't it yeah it is it's Cummins engine but we've had it tweaked actually it's, it's, it should be 170 horsepower it's the 200 all right we've had it chipped so it's 200 just look at it Andrew's grain shed look at the size of that fan house it's got some big fans in for drying the grain, this drying floor, and then he's even got stirrers as well. There's his header off his New Holland. Up now in the fan house, there's the big fans. I'll show you them in a minute. But Andrew's just pointing out, can you see? You can see straight through the walls. The, it's louvered steel, so it gets airflow, so you don't get condensation forming when the fans are running, cooling the grain. There's lots of airflow. There. When it's windy outside, the wind will come in here, and it's really nice and cool. The roof doesn't condense like it can on normal tin roofs. It's a normal tin roof, it's not um, insulated, but it, it's great because of the airflow. So when you're drying it, you've got lots of heat coming through the crop. It just create, keeps the whole building cool. Yeah, so if you look, it's a drying floor. So this is a timber slat floor with mesh, whereas ours, our drying floors are completely steel, but a bit smaller. This is the whole, these two floors completely covered um, with slatted floor. And then these huge fans in here, what are they two 50 kilowatt fans did you say 50 each, each one each one of these is 50 horsepower yeah so they drive the air down the tunnel that we've just been stood over the top of in fact you probably we'll should have, have missed all right we'll, we'll go down and have a look at the tunnel, tunnel down and that's where it sucks its air through these louvers here on the outside so we'll go down here and get in the in the tunnel so the fans are up there then they blow down this tunnel into here and put the light on into here and then this is the tunnel. So the grain either side of us, and then you can open these flaps to decide. So these open there, like that. And the air goes under the floor, under there, and then up, up through the crop. And this yeah. whole tunnel fills with air, and it comes up from... Up from there. them fans that are up there that create the pressure. So you can open, so whichever, so if you've got one crop one side, and, and not the other, you can shut one side off and open the other, or vice versa, or have them both open. So it yeah. works really well, but you use ambient air, the outside air, to whatever temperature that is, because we haven't got burners on the fans, so you just use whatever the air temperature is. Yeah. So it looks a little bit like Colin Furze's tunnel. You might have seen him on YouTube. Don't forget to check Wardy out on YouTube, Wardy's Weekly Waffle. That's it, it's yeah. Like it's bi-weekly now, isn't it's, it? It's bi-weekly. I've got one going out probably tomorrow night. Yeah, so Wardy's Waffle, have a look at that. We've got all this going on regularly. We'll have a look at the John Deere RX in a minute, because that will be a favourite. Yeah. I'll put a link below to to Wardy's last video, which is probably what Sunday's one, maybe. So if you look now from the outside of the shed, you can see the louvers. So from the inside, it looks like you can see right through it, but from the outside, it's just completely green. And then another thing that he's done, which is what everyone should do, high doorways so that you can tip wagons in the doorway. A lot of people will put a shed up and only have a 20 foot door, 20 foot square, whereas that's obviously like 30 odd foot, so you can tip in the gateway, in the, in the doorway. This is Andrew's new toy. Uh, well, 180 hours worth of new toy. Yeah. <laughs> it replaced, was it 600 quad track? It was it a 620 quad track we had that was four years old. And uh, yeah, we got rid of that, sold that um, and got this one. And to be honest, this is pulling nearly everything that the quad track was doing. And it's using probably half the amount of fuel. It's an incredible track, it's unreal. Yeah, so, four, four, so is it 410 exactly then? Yeah, and it boosts up to about 440, 450. Yeah. It's It's... I want to say it's big, but it's it's actually quite small for the size, you know. It is, it's compact, isn't it? Yeah. Quite tall. Yeah, yeah, definitely tall, but... Yeah, but not to compare to a cod track. No, it's not, no. I mean, I'm only, I'm only knee-eye to a grasshopper as it is, and I mean, you look at those tracks and the size of it. Yeah. But weighs 20 tonnes, uh, whereas the quad track weighed 29 tonnes. 
Um, and I think this holds about, uh, is it 1100 litres of fuel, 1000 litres of fuel, and the quad track held 1820. So it was a lot more fuel, but um, so we've got 200 horsepower less in this and nine tonnes less weight than the yeah. quad track. So every time you go up and down the field, you're not moving nine tonnes that you didn't need to move, exactly. are you? Exactly, yeah. And if you do have to slow down a little bit, it doesn't really matter, does it? But the design of it, you know, is great. When you look at the final drives in the back end here, just look here, right? Uh, when you look, if the light will do it, the yeah. final drives there, how big they are can, when you look at the hand. They're huge, aren't they? Yeah. Do you put much on the link arms or not? No, we've got a, we've got a um, seven leg subsoiler that we'll, uh, we'll use, but um, no, very, very little. Most of it's on the, most of it's on the draw bar. Yeah. It's nice and shiny. Here we go, on board in the 8RX, when we eventually found where the key went, <laughs> couldn't find the ignition key. Just seems so narrow compared to a quad track, doesn't it? It is ever so narrow, just here on the bonnet here, the visibility down to the down to the front tracks is absolutely superb. Yeah, if you're doing like road crop work, it's yeah. mint, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice leather interior. I've, I've been in cars with heavier steering. Yeah. Just throttle down, it'll go, will it? Or do you need to keep clicking it? Is it is it a Vario? Has it got gears? It, no, it's, it's got this. They do one now with a Vario gearbox. It's with a full power shift, rather. Um, and it's about 40 grand more than this. All right. It's nice, though. It's not bumpy either, really, is it? No. Considering if we're on a track. I would say it's, it turns shorter than it. Wheel one, doesn't it? Yeah. I suppose it could tuck the tracks under the bonnet, can't it? And and the thing is, when you look, the engine design, it's been cut away at the front, so the tracks actually turn into the side of the engine. Really yeah, clever the, design. What wasp wasp body shape is yeah. it they call it? Yeah. Wasp shaped bonnet, that's what they said. Typical of this land. About forty percent clay, thirty percent silt. But when you look at it here, the frost, how this is, ju it just falls apart. Yeah, it's crumbling, it's turning into sugar, isn't it? Yeah, That's what my dad used to say. It's just, and here, when you look at that, it just crumbles. And it is drying in the lumps now. You can see this is drying, but it is, it is still a bit sticky. They're a bit too wet underneath to do anything with yet, but it won't be long. Yeah, so see, this here has obviously been wet when it's been grubbed up, but because of the frost now, it's just, it's just like sugar. Coffee granules, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Fantastic. Our simple machine across this. We'll do it once with the coulter press and then uh, in with our free flow drill. Those of you who watch the videos will know the simple quick kit we use, and uh, it'll be on there, it'll be on my YouTube in about two weeks' time. And it will just come down, it'll be like a billiard table when it's finished. Yeah, a bit light over there. Looks amazing. You could. And all, it, all its. Um... You could cut little pockets in that and place nuker on it. So flat round there, you can see why there's so many RAF bases, can't you? Yeah, you can. That's why Lincolnshire's known as the home of the RAF. Uh, yeah, this all this has had done, it's been dragged three times with a big old super flow drag, not ploughed or anything. That's amazing. Just watch that now. Just, just shatters. That wheat does look well. What variety is that? That is Gleam, and oh, that right. was that was beans last year. Uh, we didn't get this tractor until October the 13th, so we didn't do any planting of any crops until then. And that was one of the first, that went in about October the 15th. Yeah. So it just had some fertiliser on it now? It's just, you can just see the weanings. It's just had 50 kilograms hectare of nitrogen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does look well. It's a nice field. Yeah. This is Andrew's fertiliser store. So we've got concrete panels all the way around to form a bun. So if anything was ever to split, then it'd stay inside this bund 50,000 litres in each one this is uh, Andrew's store where he keeps his sprayer so it's all insulated so if it gets cold night it doesn't doesn't get damaged by frost got a new one coming haven't you got a new one coming um, it meant to have been here in January but they have only just started building it so it's going to be another six weeks before we get it I should say another one exactly the same Housing sprayers used to be made in the village here, literally a few miles up the road, 
Uh, my father helped set the company up when they were just a village blacksmith, which was a long while ago. And they used to make uh, lady power harrow rollers, they used to make under platform harrows for Massey 30 drills um, and things like that. But then they went into sprayers. So yeah, we've got another, another housing coming. So it's local. Bowser that he uses for supporting his sprayer. So he's got chemical lockers on the front and then it's got, is it even electric start as well? It's got electric start. It's got electric start Honda engine for pumping it straight into the sprayer quickly and moving water around because it's got, is it three tanks did you say? It's three tanks. The front one is, the very front one's separate, completely separate, 5,000 litres. And then these next three are 12,000, but there's a baffle uh, in here just to stop it, stop the liquid surge in the little hole at the bottom. So it's 17,000 in total. And then you can even pre-mix your, your tank it, your tank mixes. So while someone's spraying, someone else can get your next tank full ready. Mix all your chemical, put it in ready to go. So you just suck it all in in one go through what, three inch hose? Three inch hose, yeah. All got, and then the other useful thing here is we've got this, we've got it coupled up to the air brakes on here because when this pipe's full of fertiliser, it's really heavy. Yeah. And so if you undo this valve, switch off the, here to stop the liquid coming out the Bowser. Yeah keep the one on the sprayer open, open that air valve that links it to the air tank, and then it fills this pipe with air, yep. and it empties it straight into the sprayer, and then you can handle it. And you don't end up with spillage then, do you? No, and then you just release the air off the, out of there. You hear there now, air in it. But yeah, you don't have spillages anywhere. Yeah, and then, so Hausman did all the tap work for you? Yes, how, uh, they, they, did the, they found the uh, milk tank, it's an ex-milk tank. Um, they found that, they put it on an 18 ton trailer chassis, and then uh, we took it to Housens when they were still in the village and then they've converted it all and done all the pipe work for us. Yeah, and then you can see obviously how much is in it. And how long have you had it now? Uh, about five years now, I think. That's it's immaculate like. though, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh... We do wash it quite regularly because the liquid fertiliser being corrosive. Oh, do. of course, yeah. Smart though, isn't it? But it works, it works really well. This is uh, his, his winter project, even though it's now spring. He's going to put a longer auger on that driven by a hydraulic motor from a petrol hydraulic motor and put bigger wheels and twin axles on it for filling the drill when when they're yeah. drilling so when they're digging sugar beet at the same time or loading sugar beet out you don't have to take the telly on the field to fill the drill they can swing this auger around and empty that hopper and fill the drill and the reason we're going to put an engine on it and not have the hydraulics of the drill or the tractor coupled up to it is because we don't want hydraulic pressure in the pipes the amount of times you try and release your pipes and you've got pressure on it you're going to get a spanner out so we want to completely self-contained you can leave it in the corner of the field and fill the drill easily yeah yeah, it should look good when it's done. It's well, Richard minute, Weston as well, isn't it? At the minute you see how it, how, how it works, you have, there's a handle at the back on a wire, and then you wind the wire and it pulls this down underneath. So this goes under the hopper there, yeah, and that's this just... comes out. So you just started to make it longer, is that what that other yeah, piece is? Yeah, that's an extension that came with it, but we don't know whether it's right or not yet. We're just wondering whether we need to put a new auger, a total new auger on it. Yeah. So what did it start life off as? So this started life as a, as a standard six metre Simba Solo. And then we, uh, um, I had an idea when I was laid on a beach in Crete a few years ago about making it into a one pass rate drill. And so I got Philip Wright, uh, Wright Resolutions, who used to be one of the directors of Simba. He now does a lot on his own, he helped design it. So everything from there, that beam, uh, if you like, downwards and across is still Simba, whereas all this is new. This is all what we made and, and welded on. So we got a lot of profiles cut, made it into this, and then we went to Tilso. These legs now are actually Spalding sell these. these. We tried these for Tilso um, before they became commercially available. Um, and now Spalding sell these for, for Tilso. These are real low draft and uh, the wings are positioned right behind the point so it doesn't create much surface lift and uh, creates a lot of underground movement and shattering but it, um, it actually just keeps the, the soil underneath and doesn't cause much surface disturbance and then you've got a liquid fur tank yeah and then you drop in oil seed rate into the slot yeah this fur tank it's 1200 liters so we can actually drop a thousand liter ibc into it and still have some left in it and then underneath the sheet there, we've got a seeding, your seeding unit yep. that then feeds these outlets. And, and which is, you said, Ollie, those are in line with the legs. Yep. They're all in line with the legs when it's all folded down. And we've got a rubber packer here. Yep. And this packer flexes. It flexes like that when it's warm, so it keeps clean. It doesn't need a scraper. Liquid fertilizer comes out here in line with, the, uh, in line with where the seed is. 
um, and then the DD packer at the back to press them firm and consolidate it. So, so what is it, six metres? It's five, about five and a half metres. Oh, all um, right. And again, the quad track used to pull it, uh, and we thought the RX would struggle, but the RX actually does manage it as well. Yeah. It's uh, 11 legs altogether. Right. Clayton straw rake as well. Got a Clayton straw rake, yeah. Oh, this doesn't have that strap on it. Oh, that hold it here. We, we haven't used it last year. We are just, we're just wondering what is the benefit of it at the minute. And uh, we used it the first year we had it, but we didn't use it last year, so you can see it hasn't done a lot. No, ours is getting ready for new tines, to be honest. Yeah, so the tines are quite long. Yeah, ours have worn to about, about here now. I was say crikey. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have to either... I don't know if there's well new bits on, because all that bit's still good. It's still good. start again. And the thing is, with them, with them being short, you lose your height and your clearance, don't you? Yeah, yeah. up with straw. Yeah. It's not blocked yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is his Simba free flow drill. So you've got tines, rubber packer, tines with a coulter on them, then tyre packer and a harrow. Did you do a lot still with this? Yeah, we do all the drilling with this free flow. It's amazing. It's, uh, it was one of the later ones that Simba built. It was built probably 2003, 2004. Um, we paid 18 and a half thousand for, pounds for it um, about six, seven, seven years ago. Um, and again, the quad track used to pull it, but it didn't need all that power. And now the RX on it's perfect mix. But it, you know, there's so many times in it, the leveling of it and the seed placement is just fantastic. And the way, but the trouble is it won't drill if there's a lot of trash. If there's a lot of straw and, uh, and cover crops and things, it struggles in that because it blocks up. Yeah. But generally behind with the system we're on with our solo, um, or uh, we can direct drill in the spring with it. it. It's a brilliant drill, the seed placement of it and the percentage establishment is really good. So you got a New Holland Combine? Yeah, got New Holland Combine. This one's a 15 uh, plate. Um, so it's done seven years, just coming up to its eight, har eight harvest. Uh, so CR 9090 with 35 foot on the, on the front when we get the header on. You get the green one next then? Yeah, I think we'll, uh, we, we will. I'm not, uh, we had a bit of trouble with this for a start. We didn't get a lot of support from New Holland. So uh, um, whether this is the last one we have of this one, we'll see. That feel we were in before, is that yeah, what you ripped it that's with? That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. the drag we did it with. So you can see massive, big, heavy duty legs. Yeah. But we did it and twice with that, three times I think actually with that. And it did a really, really good job. You can see Nala's having a, a play. So, um, yeah, um, really good drag for this. A lot of clearance in it and just brilliant uh, yeah. and situation. What's it, about four and a half metres? Yeah, I think it is four and a half metres, yeah. Yeah, you can't yeah. fit down the road of it. No, we won't go down the road of it. You put it on a trailer when you do it. But we only use it once every two or three years probably. But, you know, what it costs and the job it does, as you can just see from that field, it's brilliant. Just look at this shed Andrew kicks his machinery in and the bays look really wide and what he's done is he's put dummy carrier beams so basically instead of having girders every sort of like four meters or four and a half meters or every 20 or every six meters he's now got eight meter opening so you can get loads of machinery in and get it all past each other because a normal bay would be six meters by the time you put one machine in you don't have a lot of room to get anything else in next to it so it looks really smart and also at the back the shed doesn't have a gutter because the trees would block it so it's got a curved eave so the water just runs off down and it has a french drain along the bottom it's a good idea right yeah works well a good few hours looking around wardy's farm don't forget check him out on youtube need to clean that no night um now next stop stoneleaf for an nfu meeting um someone i met recently worked for the sugar factory up the road and said that they'd show me around I should have realized and got in touch with them and said i'm in newark um, i could have a look but i've forgotten who it was so if you're watching and you've, you've you were the one that invited me to the sugar factory get in touch i hope you enjoyed me looking around andrew ward's farm don't forget check him out he's got his own youtube channel wardy's weekly waffle or wardy's waffle i'll certainly put a link below uh, anyway here is today's birthdays we've got mike parish 34 rosie tucker is six jack and edward jacobs at 10 jacob sorry not jacobs donna jones is 27 barry helms is 42 Duncan Mitchell, Billy Warburton's 10, John Baker is 60, Andrew Perry. Oh, have I got Edward Baker on twice? Okay. No, John Baker, sorry, and Edward Baker is 50, uh, and Tracy Simpson, and I've got Grandad Chrissy is 81. That's, a, that's not, not quite the oldest, but nearly one of the oldest on here. 27,827 pound. 
Thank you everyone for the kind donations for the Northwest Air Ramblers. Also, the talk I did at Park Patrington discussion group there, they raised over a thousand pounds, so they wanted to pay me for coming over, so I donated that to them. They had a raffle and then Open Field have rounded it up as well. So they raised a thousand pounds that night, which is brilliant. So well done to Patrington Discussion Society for that. Anyway, that is all for today. Sorry it's quite a long video. I've been in an NFU meeting, but I thought you'd find Andrew Ward's far more interesting than the NFU meeting. So I'll see you all tomorrow.